KC2 IRV back again with another video. This one's kind of random, but uh, I wanted to make it anyway due to a recent discovery. You're staring at two uh, two very interesting items, at least interesting to me. I don't know about anybody else, but um, and they both are very different in size and shape, but they are indeed the exact same thing. They're both oven control crystal oscillators. And uh, you can tell one is gargantuan and one is eh, fairly small. I recently acquired... I recently acquired this. This is a Motorola 5 megahertz oven controlled oscillator. Um, it came out of a Micor paging station. And it is rumored, from what I am told, from someone who knows these things better than I do, to be extremely accurate. This is what they use to, to, to uh, perform simulcast paging with. So, it's supposed to be an extremely accurate oscillator. I am not sure how accurate. I could not find a data sheet on this unit. But from what I am told to people that are far older than I am, that when these stations were in operation, they normally never needed to be adjusted again, even after years. So that tells me that the aging characteristics on this oscillator are excellent. So it's a uh, fairly large unit. You can tell just by how big it is compared to my hands. Um, it's got a convenient BNC connector on it, and they run off of, as I have marked here, this one runs off of 24 volts. Um, case gets rather warm, as you would expect on an oven-controlled oscillator, and it was originally mounted, like I said, inside a, uh, inside a station, inside a, uh, uh Micor paging station. I've tested it, I've benched it against, um, a 10 megahertz GPS locked uh, oscillator, and it performs as advertised. Um, unfortunately, it's it's five volts. Or I'm sorry, five megahertz. But uh, that can uh, that can actually be useful. There's still test equipment. There is. Uh, hmm. A CWID going off. Anyway. There is still test equipment out there that uses a 5 megahertz input for its reference. Um, the Motorola MSF 5000s with the external reference shelf use can use 5 megahertz. And you can put a frequency doubler, build a frequency doubler for this and double it up to 10 megahertz if, if you wanted to. Um, it's a great, it's a great, great find. And uh, I'm just going to find out what I'm going to do with it. So, but uh, it's pretty huge. I think this one's from the early 80s. So, from what it looked like, it looked like from a station from the early 80s. So, um, but boy have things changed. I mean, this is a, this is the same unit. Same, you know... Uh, device, I mean, not exactly the same, but it's a oven control crystal oscillator, or some people call it oven compensated crystal oscillator, but this one's at 9.6 megahertz. As you see in a previous video, I purchased these off of eBay. You see how minuscule it is in comparison with this guy. So, but, uh, yeah, it's Things have certainly gotten smaller. This thing probably weighs... I had estimated like half a pound. So this weighs, you know, a couple of ounces. Um, so we've we've come quite a long way. And uh, crystal, uh, oven control crystal oscillators are an excellent source for an accurate reference. For many things, for in fact, um, 
up until recently I worked on several paging systems that used oven controlled or oven compensated crystal oscillators for their references and um, usually they needed tweaking every one to two years very minor tweaking they would drift off one or two hertz at the most so um, but that's that's pretty great for a uh, a crystal in a box with a heater essentially so if you uh, you see one of these um, snap it up at least you know be nice to have around to experiment with one thing is is you adjust you actually adjust the frequency through this hole um, there's usually a screw here but the screw wasn't here when I found it and there's a small trimmer in there and it will uh, it'll trim your frequency right up and a uh, if you don't have a if you don't have a accurate frequency counter one way to get this on frequency the way uh, I did it quick and quick and dirty when I was at the office is uh, I used a dual trace scope and uh, I jacked in a 10 megahertz signal from my uh, GPS bench GPS oscillator and then I jacked this in and since this is a multiple of 10 megahertz or I should say 10 megahertz is a multiple of this um, you can trigger off of the 10 megahertz trace you need a dual trace scope obviously and then you'll see this when it's all when it's when it's out of frequency you'll see the you'll see the uh, the trace you know the sine wave um, rolling along on the screen and you simply just adjust it till the trace is uh, steady till the, the trace is 100% uh, fixed you have to do some tweaking so and then uh, you'll be very 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 close on so it's uh like I said great great unit I'm just gonna figure out how I'm gonna implement it you can easily build a phase lock loop circuit uh, around this and synthesize some some other frequencies if you wished so possibly synthesize it out to a uh, synthesize it out to uh, the frequency of a of, say a mobile radio like a max track so um you know, max tracks you and NGM 300 use 14.4 megahertz as the reference. Um, that can be done because it is done. They use this. They use this oscillator to do that. Um, to actually, you know, divide up or multiply up rather. Um, so that's it. I'm done rambling for this evening. And if I can uh, find anything else interesting, I'll certainly post it. So. Talk to you later.